Let's talk about Verst now. So, you know, obviously it's been growing really quickly. Would love to hear some high level stats. Obviously I gave some of the EMV stats, right? Close to hundred percent year over year in the last six months, fastest growing, top three, et cetera. But we'd love to hear some stats just for the audience. And then second, um, you know, what do you think is, what are the elements that have made it really successful? I mean, we've, we've talked about some yeah. of them, but would love to hear those two things. Yeah, definitely. Well, we're we're not even two years old, yep. um, and we are, according to to Forbes and IRI, the fastest growing clean skincare brand within Mass uh, in the U.S., which is just incredible. Uh, last year, we shipped over two million products. Uh, we have a, a top five moisturizer, a top five cleanser, a top five SPF um, within where we're sold. And you know, ultimately, our our mission has been to not just create a huge, high performing super fast growing brand, but to create the clean brand that lets people shop into products that are good for them, products that are good for their planet in, uh, you know, really for the first time. So love those high levels. That's I think last year we grew, it was over 200% um, year over year. Our DGC is growing 500% um, year over year. So it's kind of wild and crazy, but I think other really important stats that I look to that I think ultimately are responsible for our success is that we have the most stringent no list uh, in all of drugstore skincare uh, to formulate safe for your body, your skin, and your planet. We are, I believe, the largest brand to beauty brand to be carbon neutral, net zero emissions in the present, not saying, hey, five <laughs> years from now, but saying no now Wow. <laughs> and going all the way back to launch. Um, and you know, definitely putting the community at the center of everything we do, and that was how we came to be by tapping into this uh, community at Who What Wear and talking to them about beauty and what was working for them, and the laundry list of things that wasn't. Over fifty thousand of those people have actively participated in the development of our brand, doing things like testing formulas, doing online surveys with us, doing focus groups, um, and I think it's it's those things that have made us the powerhouse that we are. I think absolutely we had incredible strategy coming out. We saw an opportunity to leverage specifically mass retail, which had felt more stagnant than certainly than direct to consumer, um, also than prestige retail. Um, we saw the opportunity that mass clean skincare was going to be hung. There was a huge amount of consumer appetite uh, and a, a real degree of have and have not of people with high income, high access, high education, their routines are changing. And the 90%, you know, they're saying, hey, clean sounds amazing. Having products that work for dark spots and hormonal acne, I want that, but it's just not for me. Yep. Um, and it was having that consumer feedback and every brand leverages data. But for us, that became our DNA. And it became not about what Melanie wants or what Catherine wants or what her what our product development director wants, but what does the community want? How do we put them at the center and how do we give them a voice um, in a way that they haven't been listened to? And it translates into eight different types of proprietary data that we leverage, um, some that are qualitative, some that are quantitative, and really that power us at, at every single part of the decision journey. But it's also become our culture to really be transparent to that community, to be accountable to them. Um, and I, I do feel that that is some of the best marketing decisions we've made to walk the walk. Yep. And for us, the focus is always on authenticity and not what can we say, but what can we do? Knowing that by building trust with our consumer and by committing to being accountable to them and being straight about, hey, like, here's where we are. Here's where we're not yet, but we're going to be. That has really brought a lot more of that connection to mass skincare that was missing. Because at the time that we came in, when we talked to our community about masking, Kelly said it's airbrushing, it's hyped up ingredients, mm -hmm. none of it works for me. Um, and ultimately, that was what we we wanted to solve. We wanted to bring that that trust and that soul back to an industry that touches basically everyone <laughs> because we all have skin. Yep, yep, yeah. The uh, sorry, you got me distracted. It's something I was going to ask you or I was going to comment on. Oh, the feedback loop. I think that feedback loop that you're talking about, you say everybody does it, but I don't know that everybody does, right? Like, and I think that's part of what um, makes the internet really special is just that ability to communicate directly with your customers in a meaningful one-to-one -one way and to, you know, and then to, to respond to their feedback in a really kind of short time span. So yeah. it's, uh, it's super powerful and it's not surprising to hear that that's what you guys are doing, but um, impressive nonetheless. Yeah, and I'd say, you know, while data is incredibly important, it is more of an art than a science. 
Um, and that's where I recognize that, you know, I've done the scientist thing in the past mm-hmm. and I am not a scientist now. I have a vested <laughs> interest in the outcome. I have a direction I want to take. Things. I want to take things cleaner, more affordable, better skin, better for the planet. Um, and data is always, it's backward looking. It's amazing at explaining the past. It can be really, really bad at predicting the future. And just look at past elections or like you name it, that, that we've quote gotten wrong with our models. Um, so for, for us, you know, we really, we use data to understand our consumer, to empathize with them. Um, how are they making decisions? What are they thinking and feeling? But ultimately then it's up to us to extract, extrapolate that into this future world, this future product. Um, that that future state. And I think that is what has been so tremendous at helping us be, you know, five years ahead of the pack. And as I reflect back at last year in COVID, it was a year of just huge acceleration towards mass essential retailers Mm -hmm. at the time, you know, when we got the first together. That that wasn't a word, (laughs) but we saw that coming. We saw that people said, why do I have to go to a specialty retailer to buy a clean beauty item? Like, that's silly. Why can't I just buy it at the store that I'm already at? Same with clean, same with sustainability, same with accountability. All those things were very forward indicators. And we set ourselves up in a way that let us see that first and act on that first so that when that acceleration did happen, we were there at at kind of the peak of that wave and ready to ride it. 